Hey y'all, it's Leela with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's Tumblr tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this glittered fall themed rustic tumbler. Like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. And don't forget to follow me on all of my socials. I can be found on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I'm starting with my 16 ounce wine tumbler from Makerflow Crafts. I first sanded this tumbler down with an 80 grit sanding block, and then I wiped it down with 91% alcohol. Make sure you are sanding the rim of the tumbler and the bottom, and make sure you are using at least 91% alcohol to remove any of those excess oils or sanding dust that may have been placed on the tumbler. Once my alcohol was dry on my tumbler, I'm going in with Pop of Colors Blush. This paint is going to be used as my glitter adhesive for my tumbler. The glitters that I am using are from Glitter Heart Co. I am using Butterscotch and Autumn Breeze. I'm placing Butterscotch on top and then Autumn Breeze on the bottom. I first start by painting the blush all over the tumbler and I always try to paint a thicker rather than thinner coat because I don't want that paint to dry. If you do want to use acrylic paint mixed with Mod Podge or if you want to paint this tumbler white and then use your spray adhesive method, Mod Podge method, or even epoxy method, use whichever glitter application method you are comfortable using for this step. I thought using the pop of color and with the blush color was a lot easier than any other method for me. So once all of the paint was added to the tumbler, I'm going right in with my glitter. You do not want this to dry because again, we are using this as an adhesive. I'm first placing the bottom color onto my tumbler and I'm focusing on the bottom of the tumbler. So you'll see that I'm tapping that glitter like salt to the bottom of the tumbler and you'll see a little bit is coming down or leaving the cup. So the reason why I'm doing a little bit at a time is because this is a smaller tumbler, so I work in smaller steps or I do smaller amounts of glitter on the tumbler, if that makes sense. So you'll see that I start very slowly and I'm focusing on the bottom and I want that glitter to fall down or cascade down the tumbler. And then I move on to that top color and then I go back to the bottom color. Again, the reason why I go back and forth with my glitter colors is because this is such a small tumbler. If I was working with, let's say like a 30 ounce or a 20 ounce skinny, that glitter is going to run down even more and I have more room to play with rather than using this 16 ounce wine tumbler. So once I added that bottom color, I went in with my top color and you'll see that some of my paint dried while I was placing the glitter on the tumbler. That is okay. I'm going to take my paintbrush and just spot treat some of those areas. Just blot that or fan that paint on very lightly. You don't wanna add a lot of paint to those areas because it's going to look like very splotchy and you're going to have glitter clumped up in those areas. So I'm slowly fanning that paint and then going back in with that top color and I'm trying to have that glitter, once I go towards the middle, have that glitter cascade down or fall down. You'll see that I'm lifting my hand more or further away from the tumbler as I get closer to the middle because I don't want a lot of that glitter placed on that tumbler. You want that fading effect. And the reason why I place my glitters into these one ounce containers is because I do have a heavy hand, y'all all know that. So if I accidentally spill that entire cup of glitter onto the tumbler, I don't have to worry as much because I know it's a little bit of glitter. So if I were to spill that two ounce bottle <laughs> of glitter onto the tumbler, it'll take me a lot longer to fix that tumbler than if I just spill a little bit. So you'll see I'm just slowly mixing those colors in the middle as I'm getting closer to the middle, I'm raising my arm away from the cup, getting more further away from the cup than whenever I'm towards those edges or the top or the bottom of the tumbler. Another thing I like to do is mix those two colors together. So I mix it inside of a cup and then I sprinkle some of that glitter towards the middle or in the middle to give that nice mix effect. So you can always just mix those colors together and just pour those glitters on the middle using that one ounce cup or you can just use your finger like what I'm doing and just sprinkle that on, pinch it on like some salt and just give it a nice mix effect in the middle depending on how hard or how um, 
soft you want your ombre or your gradient effect. During this process, if you find your tumbler drying or you find your glitter not sticking to your tumbler, that's okay. You can always go back in and spray the middle of your tumbler with some spray adhesive and then go ahead and place more glitter towards the middle. So use that spray adhesive, add that glitter, and look how beautiful that tumbler looks so far. And once my glitter was placed on my tumbler, I'm going to spray my tumbler with my Krylon Crystal Clear Acrylic Coating. This helps seal that glitter onto the tumbler, and this also lets that glitter stay into place. So whenever you epoxy over, if you don't spray your tumbler with this sealer, then your glitter is going to move around that tumbler and it's going to really mix and you're not going to keep that ombre effect. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes for the sealer to dry on your tumbler. And once the sealer is dry, go in and epoxy your tumbler. For this 16 ounce tumbler, I use 30 milliliters of epoxy. That's 15 milliliters part B and 15 milliliters part A. I do apologize. I did forget to record this part. I actually thought my camera was recording and it wasn't. So once your epoxy is cured, we'll move on to the next step. I did use my fast set epoxy for this step. You don't have to use fast set epoxy. You can use whichever epoxy you have on hand. And once my tumbler's epoxy is cured on my tumbler, we're going in and we're going to clean up the rim of the tumbler and also sand the tumbler. I am using a 220 grit sanding block to sand the tumbler. I'm using a more fine grit because I do not want to sand away that glitter. Before I decided to do that, I guess I wanted to go in and clean up the rim. I do this after every epoxy step. I'm using an X-Acto knife and I'm cleaning that excess epoxy that may have cured around the rim. Again, I do this after every epoxy step instead of doing one big cleanup at the end. It makes it a lot easier whenever you're doing that final cleanup towards the end of your tumbler process. Make sure you are trying to press down towards the middle of the cup and not press towards the outside of the cup because if you do press down towards the outside, your hand might accidentally slip and then cut that tumbler. So I'm using a 180 grit sanding block to sand away the rim of the tumbler. So you wanna make sure you're sanding the rim of the tumbler and, and kind of sanding a little bit of the rim. You'll see how I do that there. And that way I'm, I'm kind of creating a seal for that glitter and for that design. So when I epoxy over, it's going to have that nice seal on the tumbler. So you don't have to worry about your epoxy coming up. Once I finish sanding the rim of the tumbler, I'm going to sand around this tumbler. Again, sanding very light because I don't want to sand away any of that glitter. And once I finished sanding my tumbler, I went in with my 91% alcohol again, just for, to remove any of that excess oil or sanding dust that may have been left behind on my tumbler. You're going to see your tumblers foggy. Ignore that, it's okay. It's going to shine right back up whenever you place that epoxy over that tumbler. And now I'm going to go in with some foils. This is the foil adhesive that I use. It's Deco Foil and it's Transfer Gel Duo. It goes on white and then it dries clear. I did find this on Amazon and it was very affordable in my opinion. In order to apply this adhesive, I always use a paintbrush and like it says, it does go on white and then it dries clear. So what I do is I apply this adhesive in random spots of the tumbler. You have to let this adhesive dry. So you can either air dry this tumbler, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes because you are adding just a little bit of that adhesive. Or if you have no patience like me, then you can take your heat gun and use your heat setting on low and apply a little bit of heat to those areas and then it should dry very, very quickly. You need to make sure that this adhesive is dried before you add your foils to your tumbler.
Once that adhesive was completely dried, I went in with some of this cute leopard print foil and you use a little bit of this, so a little bit of foil goes a long ways. I always cut my foil in squares. You press it down on those areas, you rub with your finger, and then you lift up the foil. Make sure that silver side is placed down and your printed side is faced up. So if you accidentally do this like upside down, you'll quickly learn that it's not the right way. So I'm just placing those areas. I'm first using my finger to try to feel those sticky areas. That's where the foil is or the tacky areas. And then I'm just pressing along with that foil. You can see that that little piece of foil is already going such a long ways. I did purchase this foil from the vinyl people and I will have their website linked in my description. Once I was satisfied with my first round of foils, I then went in with my white from Pop of Color. You can use acrylic paint or any other paint you have on hand. I just like Pop of Color because it dries very quickly. I'm taking one of these rough brushes and I am just placing a little bit of that white paint into the cap of my paint container because I only want a little bit of paint. So I did this very slowly because I didn't want to overwhelm this area with paint. I wanted to keep it like that rustic or worn out look. So that's why I'm using that cheap Dollar Tree brush and that's why I'm adding a little bit of paint at a time. You'll see that a little bit goes on and you'll see those brush strokes onto that tumbler. Again, that's the look that I wanted to go for. If you wanted to paint that entire area, just use a lot more paint and then paint the entire area and then you'll see how I kind of distress it here at the end. So since I used just a little bit of paint, this paint took about five minutes to dry. By the time I was done adding those final touches, this paint was actually dry. So I went in with 91% alcohol, I placed that on a paper towel, and then I wiped away some of those areas that I wanted to remove. And then this uh, also helped with that distress look. So you'll see that I'm wiping away the outside of the area. I'm just randomly wiping away some areas just to make it look more distressed and kind of give it that over, overall look. So this was very easy and do keep in mind that if you use alcohol or 91% alcohol on those foil areas, it will bring up that foil as well. So if you are using that on the foil areas, just learn to press very lightly and don't press down as hard. And then I went in with my second round of foil. So I went back in with that adhesive. I used a little bit of heat for that adhesive to dry. And then I added more foils around the tumbler. I wanted to add just a little bit of that leopard print, but not a lot. I didn't want to take over the whole effect, if that makes sense, or take over the design. So I always tell you all this, these tumblers are used as an inspiration. So use my design as an inspiration and design whichever tumbler you like to design. So if you want to load this tumbler up with foils, go ahead and do so. If you want to add more paint or less paint, again, this is your tumbler and I'm sure whatever you create, it's going to turn beautiful. And once those foils were placed on my tumbler, I went right in with epoxy in my tumbler. I used about 10 to 15 milliliters of epoxy total. The reason why I epoxy this tumbler is just to lock in that design. So you do not need a lot of epoxy. You need a very thin layer of epoxy. And again, I did use my fast set epoxy for this step just to speed up the process.
And once my epoxy was cured on my tumbler, again, I went in and I cleaned up the rim of the tumbler. And you can also do a light sanding if you do need to sand your tumbler before we move on with that next step. And once I finished sanding, I went in with my 91% alcohol again before adding a water slide to my tumbler. I found this cute water slide from creativefabrica.com. The way that I seal my water slides is I use my Rust-Oleum first. So I spray one coat of the Rust-Oleum sealer onto the water slide. I let that dry for about 15 minutes and then I move on to my Plasti Dip. This is a clear Plasti Dip. Once I'm finished adding that Plasti Dip, I then spray another and final coat of that Rust-Oleum over that Plasti Dip. So Rust-Oleum, Plasti Dip, Rust-Oleum, and then your decal or your water slide is completely sealed. The Rust-Oleum enamel seals in that design, so seals in that ink, and then the Plasti Dip allows that paper to be more durable so you can work with your water slides more comfortably so you don't have to worry about your water slides ripping. Once that is sealed, I am using room temperature water to apply my water slides to my tumbler. I let that sit in the water for about 60 seconds to a minute. I apply a little bit of water to my tumbler and then I remove that water slide and place that water slide onto the tumbler. You will see that it does move around a lot, so make sure you place your water slide wherever you wanna place it. I use that silicone brush to fan out any of that excess water underneath the water slide, and then I use a paper towel to blot around the areas to really dry that area. I know a lot of people are scared to use water slides, but using this method and sealing the water slides the way that I use to seal, it really makes this process a lot easier. And once my water slide was placed on my tumbler and I had no more water on my water slide, the area was completely dried, I went in with my final coat of epoxy. I used 20 milliliters of epoxy for this final coat. I used 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters part B, totaling 20 milliliters of epoxy. If you need to do two coats of epoxy, so do the first coat, let it cure, and then the second coat, I would recommend doing two thin coats instead of the one thicker coat. You don't wanna overload your tumbler with a lot of epoxy because you still want a thin and smooth tumbler. If you are a beginner crafter or a beginner tumbler creator, you can always check out my YouTube channel, I have a beginner's playlist and it goes through all those, those tiny steps that you might have hiccups on while just starting out or just starting to learn how to make these tumblers. And then once my epoxy was cured on my tumbler, I then removed it from the cup turner and then I cleaned up the rim for the final time and then I cleaned up the inside of the tumbler. If you guys need assistance with cleaning up the inside of the tumbler, again, check out those beginner help tutorials. They will help you tremendously with these steps. And once I was finished with those steps, my tumbler was ready to go. This cute fall tumbler was so fun to create and I really loved how this design turned out. Again, remember these tumblers are used as an inspiration, so create your tumblers the way that you wanna create them. I hope y'all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. And if you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. And reminder, I am on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Thanks so much for watching y'all and I'll see y'all next time.